Hello everybody, I am Sarah with the trains and I'm here this morning at the North Norfolk Railway for the Mixed Traction Gala. Um, anyway, let's get on and get some footage of some trains and stuff because that's what we're here for. I should mention this is actually my first railway gala rather than just a regular day at a heritage railway and I thought the atmosphere was pretty exciting even if one of the locomotives I was looking forward to seeing wasn't running due to technical issues. Once we pass through Weybourne, the British Rail Standard Class 4 locomotive that we're riding behind really seems to pick up the pace, as you can hear. As we pulled into Holt Station, the final stop of this journey and the third main station on the Poppy Line, I decided to nip down the platform to see the locomotive that had brought us here. 76084 is one of only four British Rail Class 4 locomotives in preservation. Built in 1957 as part of the last batch of locos built at Horwich Works, it was withdrawn from service in 1967. Following a 16-year restoration programme, it returned to steam in May 2013. Our next journey of the day is aboard E56062, part of what is referred to at the NNR as the Eastern Set. Built by Metro Camel in the 1950s, the Class 101 was part of the plan to phase out steam. The return of this diesel multiple unit to green British Rail livery and beautiful green Marquette get my seal of approval. The locomotive at the head of this train pulling into Weybourne is number 564. Built in 1912, it's a Great Eastern Railway Class Y14, or if you want to give it its later LNER class, J15. As we had a bit of a delay at Weybourne, I decided to head down the platform to see the locomotive at the other end. It's D5631, a Class 31 diesel electric also known as Brush Type 2, that was built at Brush Traction Loughborough in 1960. It was recorded as work in the remnants of the Midland and Great Northern Main Line at one time, and was used for both passenger duties and freight. Hopping back onto the train, we're on our way again to Sheringham, this time in a British Rail Mark I carriage.
in Sheringham, I decided to pay another visit to 564. This little loco served 50 years, mostly in Norfolk and Suffolk, before being finally withdrawn in 1962 as part of the elimination of steam in East Anglia. It's now been restored to a condition close to when it was built 110 years ago. After a quick trip to the refreshment room to give me some more energy for the rest of my day, I decided to take a look around Sheringham Station. This station was originally closed by British Rail in 1967 when they decided to build a modern station just across the road. Since then it was acquired by the North Norfolk Railway and opened as their main station in 1975. It's been restored to a 1955 style and has plenty of things that will make you think you're back in that time period, including plenty of advertisements for things like cigarettes um, and a replica of the original footbridge, which opened in 2016. There's also plenty of era appropriate signs, which means that whether you're looking for the ticket office or the toilet, you'll be sure to feel that you're in the 1950s. Now, if you take a walk out of the station, past the bus stop with the painting of the B12 class inside, up to the signal box, and then look towards the modern station, you'll see that the train lines extend beyond this gate. This level crossing was opened in 2010 and connects the heritage station to the modern Sheringham station, meaning that the NNR is connected to the main network which is really handy for visiting locomotives. So I know earlier I was talking about how this is the first um, railway gala I've ever been to. I've been to Heritage Railways before, but never been to an actual gala. And honestly, it does not disappoint. I highly recommend it. Um, <laughs> I was never really into diesel um, until relatively recently. But seriously, ride behind some diesel locos, get on some DMUs. It's fantastic. Even if you are a total steam head, go for it. I'm having the most fun today. Unfortunately, my travelling companion has had to go home because he is not very well. Um, but I'm still going to jump on and off trains all day. And if I can get in the buffet car, I totally will. Can it be true? Sarah with the trains is in a first class carriage? With her own compartment for now. And I promise, I haven't got a third class ticket. I've got a platform ticket. Having been in here a grand total of five minutes, um, I fully endorse this first class compartment. At Weybourne, as D5631 takes away my beautiful first class compartment, I take the opportunity to see the mystery locomotive sent by direct rail services. It's a class 37, number 37401 also known as Mary Queen of Scots, and I've been trying to catch a glimpse of her all day. Also known as English Electric Type 3, some people nickname the Class 37s as tractors because of their so-called agricultural sound. I'm now 
ready to be whisked away again on this Class 25, which was built in Manchester in 1966. D7659 actually only came back into service in late 2021 after 23 years of restoration that basically saw the locomotive be rebuilt. <laughs> For this next part of my journey, I don't actually know what locomotive I'm riding behind because for some reason I didn't film it, photograph it, or make any note of uh, what it was. So let's just assume that it's one I'd already ridden behind before and get on with the rest of the trip. Okay, so I think this is so cute at Holt Station. They actually have a retro style um, phone box. Sadly, it doesn't work, but check this. They have the old rotary style phone and the button A and button B. And if I remember what my granddad said rightly, button A is what you press when the call connects and button B, if it doesn't connect, you get your penny back. So sitting in this British Railways Mark 1 suburban carriage, um, in a compartment in the third class section this time, not the first, which I was in earlier, so yeah, I'm slumming it now. I've decided this is my last train of the day. Um, it's been a complicated day. There's been uh, cancellations, there was a line side fire, uh, issues with locomotives, so it's not gone to plan at all but to hell with it I've got tomorrow um, so I'm just gonna chill and wait to leave Hull and get back to Sheringham and then maybe go for a walk on the beach and I'll have an ice cream and I've decided I'm kind of in love with this moquette um, I mean the quality of the seats may not be the best I will demonstrate as you can see, quite springy, not as soft and plushy as the one I was in earlier, but that was first class. I'm still in love with the moquette in here though, I love the colour, I don't know what it is. Look at the beautiful moquette! Yes, I'm aware I'm a little strange. This is not news to me. morning wonderful internet people I am back here at the North Norfolk Railway again uh, for day two of my visit to the mixed traction gala as you can see I am back in one of these British Rail Mark 1 carriages with the moquette that I am so in love with Wandering through the neighbouring and completely silent carriage, I remembered something I had been intrigued to review, and that's the toilet. 
unfortunately on all of these trains the toilets are in fact out of action so I wasn't able to do that. Having been hauled by one of the diesel locomotives we met yesterday I decided to go straight to the most important building at Holt Station, the gift shop and refreshment room. The station here at Holt is in a 1936 style but it's not the original station or even the original location. The original 1887 station was actually demolished when the nearby bypass was built. When the Eastern and Midlands Railway very first arrived in Holt in 1884, the station, which was much closer to the centre of town, was purely a sleeper platform and some wooden buildings. It was in 1887, when the line to Cromer was completed, that a brick-built station was erected. The old wooden building was moved to Melton Constable Station, where it served as a reading room. The original Holt station buildings were sadly destroyed by fire in 1926 and a concrete replacement was built. The building you see here today is actually from Stalham and was rebuilt brick by brick on this platform. As we waited for our next train on platform 2 and I finished my cup of tea, I decided now was a good time to give the waiting shelter a little review. So I'm testing out the waiting shelter. Pretty nice. Approved. The next train of the day was another familiar loco. And as we rode to the next station, I remembered to obey the signs carefully. Weybourne Station has been restored to a 1910 style. When the line between Holt and Cromer originally opened in 1887 by the Eastern and Midlands Railway, a station wasn't even constructed here. The station was only built because the Midland and Great Northern Railway were attempting to develop Weybourne as a tourist destination in the late 19th century. This station was built in 1900 and opened to passengers on the 1st of July 1901 and was intended to serve the nearby Weybourne Springs Hotel, which sadly no longer exists. Although a lot of the original station features exist, this waiting room was only constructed in 1987 what was the old porter's room, an exhibition has been set up to honour Weybourne's use as a filming location for various TV shows, especially an episode of Dad's Army, which they seem to be very proud of because the NNR even hosts Dad's Army live events sometimes. Paying a quick visit to the ladies, I did discover them to be in original 1901 condition with original 1901 features, but as lovely as I thought it was, I didn't really feel quite right about filming in there. So instead, here's the waiting room, and I'll leave you to explore the ladies for yourself. For any fans of model railways, I think you'll be pretty pleased with the setup they've got here at Weybourne. It's our old friend 76084 from day one. Come to say hello. <laughs> Aboard a class 101, 51228 this time, I was able to appreciate the beautiful interior. Look at that blue moquette. After a quick stop off in Sheringham, including a visit to Mary Queen of Scots, again, and a trip to the refreshment room where I sadly broke my crystal bracelet, it was time to hop aboard the restaurant car to head back to Holt. 
Back in Holt one final time, I paid a visit to the William Marriott Museum, named after the chief engineer of the Eastern and Midlands Railway, which later became part of the Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway. William Marriott retired after over 40 years in 1924. There are so many items in here, I could make an entire video purely about the museum. But here are some of my favourites, including what somebody described in the guest book as a confusing typewriter. If you ever get lost in the museum, you can always go and see the Midland and Great Northern era station master, who has some very clear personal boundaries. Don't worry, Albert, you're far too creepy for me to consider touching you. For anyone who wasn't completely satisfied by the model railway at Weybourne, there's another set up here at Holt. It even includes a really lovely viaduct that I was absolutely in awe of, especially seeing the train go rumbling across it. Just beyond the bottom of Platform 2, you'll find the old railway cottage. Made from an old railway carriage, this was actually being lived in up until 2008. Since then, it's been moved to this location and has been restored to a 1936 style, including all appropriate features, even down to the most evil toilet paper of all. So here at the railway cottage at Holt, they do have a delightful outside toilet, as would have been the case in the 1930s, complete with Heisel medicated and for some reason a picture of the king. Deciding not to make use of those facilities, we hopped back aboard another British Rail Mark 1 carriage instead. So after a very full two days at the North Norfolk Railway Mixed Traction Gala, I have finally decided this is my last train journey of the day from Hull all the way back to Sheringham. It's been an absolutely fantastic weekend and uh, can I please do this every day? Please let me make riding trains just like my job. That's a thing, isn't it? Well, I wish it was. Even though riding trains can't be my full-time job, my last one today was pretty special for me. Being hauled by Mary Queen of Scots. Highlight of my day, I think. As our train started to slow down on this journey though, I realised there was a station I'd forgotten to mention. It's the only request stop on the line and not every train stops there. It's called Kelling Heath. There's no buildings at the station, so there's no station announcements or anything, but it's a perfect place if you want to get off and walk around the countryside. However, given the amount of disruption we'd had on the line this weekend, I didn't really dare step off and go for a wander. I left I decided to pay one last visit to the diesel locomotive that had somehow won my usually steam-filled heart.
Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you've liked this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more from me. We're randomly stopped for I'm not sure what reason. Ooh, and we're off again. Okay, so I think this is so cute at Holt Station. <laughs> Let's start that again. I'm just trying to get myself in the, in the scent myself in the shop and get it right and not be weird. I just can't. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Go back and do it again. Why? Because a load of people in cars came across. Okay.